All right. Good morning, everyone. Let's. Uh, well, it's uh, nine minutes past nine o'clock. I think we should uh, uh, get going. Uh, we have uh, seventy-two participants in the webinar uh, room uh, today, and uh, we're so happy to see all of you again. Thank you so much for joining our, our, our weekly discussions here in, in AGF. And uh, last week, if you were able to join our webinar, we, uh, we had a wonderful guest last week in the person of uh, Dr. Philip Tan. And uh, we, we had a wonderful discussion on uh, leadership in uh, tough times. So I, I hope you were able to get some insights and value from that discussion as we really are in uh, extraordinary times uh, these days. And uh, today, we are also very fortunate to have with us another fantastic speaker. Uh, subject matter expert and uh, with his uh, track record and experience I'm sure we're going to learn a lot about uh, risk assessment today so our, our featured uh, topic for the week is uh, risk assessment uh, and we're going to uh, uh, discuss everything in 45 minutes as, as that is our format I'm sure our speaker can you know talk about this topic for one week for, 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 for all we know but it's uh, going to do his best to uh, cover everything in, in the next uh, 45 uh, minutes. And uh, maybe we can have a quick uh, 15 minutes uh, q and if you have, I'm sure you have a lot of questions. So let me just uh, uh, introduce to you our speaker for uh, today. And uh, what, what, what the privilege indeed, indeed is an honor for me to introduce to you our guest speaker. He is a principal consultant uh, on uh, productivity, quality, environment, health and safety, food safety, as well as uh, energy. He is uh, a practitioner, a subject matter expert on ISO 9001, ISO 14001, ISO 45, ISO 29990, ISO 23, ISO 31, ISO 37001, ISO 50, and ISO 50002, ISO 28000, ISO 22, SS 590, and of course, uh, the business safe. And so um, uh, he, he, he is uh, in, in, in this industry for the last uh, 38 years. And uh, with working experience, of course, on uh, management systems, he, he worked with uh, uh, DuPont, uh, Shell, uh, Tijin, uh, Polycarbonate, uh, with PUV Sud as well, uh, BSI Singapore. And uh, I actually met this uh, gentleman in BSI in Singapore when I was also studying my a lead auditor core. So, in other words, he is my he's my professor, <laughs> and uh, his services include the in 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 the Asia Pacific regions like Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, uh, Vietnam, of course, the Philippines, uh, Cambodia, India, China, Bangladesh, uh, Middle East, and of course uh, Qatar. He's uh, currently based right now in uh, Singapore, and uh, he he earned his bachelor of uh, environmental and occupational safety and health studies in uh, Australia. And um, he, he holds a Nini Bosch International General Certificate on OSH, uh, management of Hazardu Substances as course. It's a graduate certificate in workplace safety and health, is including auditing. He's a registered fire safety manager. He's uh, an IRCA lead auditor uh, on OSH, QMS, EMS, and uh, an IRCA principal auditor uh, as well. And the list goes on and on. So what a comprehensive, uh, fantastic uh, uh, resume here coming from our speaker. So without much ado, uh, let me uh, turn you over to our speaker for today, who's going to talk about risk assessment. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome uh, Mr. Raghunathan uh, Chandrakisan, straight from uh, Singapore. Raghu, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, John. Thank you very much for your introduction. Okay, uh, Kumusta? <laughs> I hope you all can hear me, huh? gentlemen, ladies. Okay, on behalf of uh, Jong, huh? so please uh, welcome you all to this webinar and I appreciate your time. I think uh, with my introduction, already five, ten minutes gone already. So <laughs> I'm left with only about 30 minutes. So just bear with me. Huh? So I'll try my very best to give you some uh, insights and uh, what I know slightly more. Huh? in the industry and uh, just bear with me and uh, do uh, drop in the chat uh, room uh, your any questions for now i try my very best to look at it once in a while uh. so so all the best to all uh. so can we proceed john yes ragu please go ahead uh, let me uh, let yeah. me just uh, share my screen uh. i have uh, prepared some slides go ahead ragu. 
All right, so, so just to give you uh, some introduction, uh, I have less than 20 slides, so not to worry. Uh, so you can start counting down the slides in case you are running out of time. Uh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so as you all can see, uh, risk assessment uh, is a topic uh, I'm going to be teaching you all. And you can see my name uh, is R-A-G. Uh. You can see R-A. In front of my name, there's already an R-A there. So this assessment is part and parcel of my name also. <laughs> that's that's a good one. That's a good uh, one. Right? <laughs> okay. So I think I, I would uh, like to thank AGF also for making this arrangement. So looking forward to more opportunities. Huh? So as I think John mentioned, I have been to Philippines many times. I just wish that this is being done in Philippines. So that after the seminar or the webinar, I can go to Boracay, uh, Baguio, Cebu, enjoy. But because of this pandemic, uh, we have no choice. Uh, so I think uh, this is the best opportunity, uh, our best choice. So I hope uh, you all are staying safe. And I uh, hope uh, the situation is improving uh, in the Philippines also. Uh. So I think we can overcome this uh, pandemic, uh, not to worry. Uh, okay. Anyway, I think there's a joke also they say uh, normally, uh, this pandemic won't last long. Uh. You know why? Because it's made in China. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just a joke, only, lah. Not to worry. There, there goes the quality, right? <laughs> <laughs> it won't last long. <laughs> okay, All right. So let's proceed, huh? So in case you have anything, uh, just unmute, huh, And then just stop me, lah. So if not, just let me just proceed on, huh? Ragu, uh, what, what we're going to do here, Ragu, is we ask them to uh, type their questions in the chat box, and then I'm going to raise their question with you. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, if we allocate the last ten minutes or fifteen minutes, something like that, it's better that way, lah. So that the flow uh, can go through. Uh. All right, clear? Can? So let's uh, proceed on. Uh. You go okay. ahead, Ragu. All right, thank you very much. So, risk management process uh, so is uh, encompassing risk assessment as well. So, I'm supposed to be talking about risk assessment. Okay, but what we are really in, uh, in the uh, talking about uh, is actually uh, the management process. So risk assessment is actually part of the management process whereby you need to have communication just like any ISO systems uh, that you all are familiar with. Uh. So I'm going to encompass more on risk assessment alone, uh, the process. Uh. Okay, so the objective for today is to understand what is RA. I will use RA uh, as a short form uh, for the process and uh, what are the identification of hazards, Okay, different kind of hazards. And how do you analyze them and evaluate uh, how dangerous it is and select all the risk treatment plans or the hierarchy of control. Huh? I believe you all are familiar with some of the terminology. Huh? So I'm not going to uh, stop and then uh, define it. Huh? So in case you have any Q&A later, we can uh, attend to it. Huh? Okay, let me just start off huh, with uh, storytelling. Huh? Okay. So that's something that I'm good at, huh? telling story. Huh? So for those who are first time introduced to risk assessment, huh? let me just quickly huh? share with you a simple crocodile story. I think it's a, in Tagalog, you call it boya, so right, crocodile? That, no? that is right. You got it correctly. Even the pronunciation, Raghu, is perfect. Huh? Boya. Oh, boya, okay, good. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you all a boya story to illustrate my risk assessment in five, 10 minutes. I'll make it uh, short and sharp. Please All go right. ahead. All right. Okay, uh, so bear with me. Uh. I hope you all can see. Uh. This is my boy. Uh. My drawing not so good. Uh. Apologies. Uh. <laughs> you might have come across this, uh, where I think a uh, safety practitioner might use this illustration, but let me just repeat again. Uh. I hope everybody can see. Huh? Okay. Okay, for now, huh? just uh, let me just introduce. This is the boya, number one. Okay. So I'm sure you all are familiar. Huh? The first thing you do in RA is identify the hazard. So number one is, first one is a hazard. You have to know what is the hazard first. Sometimes experience can tell you. Sometimes knowledge, huh? your past working uh, exposure, all this can tell you what is the hazard. 
So that's the first thing you need to identify what is the hazard. So a boya cannot be a pet, huh? It can injure you, can bite you, and so on. So next is uh, I have three uh, uh, workers, or let's say this is a zoo. Huh? Imagine you're visiting a zoo. You're going for an animal show. So you have three uh, zookeepers who are supposed to feed them with their food, huh? which is their lunchtime, huh? which is in their hands. Okay? So worker A is almost five meters away from the crocodile. Worker B is almost 10 meters away from the crocodile. And worker C is almost 20 meters away from the crocodile. So looking at this scenario, huh, I, I'm very sure you all said there's a three kind of risk, huh? low, medium, and high. There are three types of risk only. Huh? So looking at this huh, picture, huh, which one do you think is the high risk, which one is the low risk, which one is the medium risk? Maybe I think, John, you can help to answer. Huh? If not, <laughs> I don't see yeah. the whole yeah, you, 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 you participants, you may, you may type your answers in the chat box. We're, we're looking at it, okay? We're, we'll wait for your answers. So ah. please feel free to type your answers in the chat okay. box. But if you ask me, Raghu, I think, uh, I think uh, yeah, yeah, so we have answers here, Raghu, uh, from Maria Corazon Balasa. She said low risk is A, medium risk is B, high risk is C. Huh? Uh, from Lloyd, the low risk is uh, the worker C. Uh, from oh, the other way around, huh? Yes, uh, the, the, you so can see the answers are good in the chat box. This is medium, this is high. Okay, so from here you can see, huh? it's very obvious, huh? okay? Risk assessment is sometimes common sense. Okay, I'm, I'm sure I haven't looked at your answers yet, but generally speaking, I'm very sure that most of you all choose huh? A huh? as high risk because he's the nearest to the crocodile. Why? Yeah. So he's only five meters away. Anything happens, anything goes wrong, he will, chances are he will get injured. I'm sure you all agree. Whereas worker B is almost 10 meters. Even if, let's say, uh, if the, the mood, the crocodile mood is not there, he, he's unhappy with the food, he still has 10 meters uh, to run away. So I will consider this as a medium risk. And of course, the, the very safe guy is worker C, which is 20 meters away. I hope my English is clear. Huh? So, uh, so perfect, worker, perfect, Raghu. Okay, so worker C, uh, of course, uh, is in the low risk because it's almost two, 20 meters away. So, I already identified the first step is the hazard. Second is you need to do the evaluation, which is consider whether it's low, medium, or high. There are many methodologies uh, that you use. Uh, I'm using a simple illustration. Uh, which is very common sense. Huh? So next is what you do is number three huh, is controls. Okay. Second is evaluation. Huh? Second is evaluation. Evaluate. Pardon me huh, for the handwriting and all that. Huh? So I already done the first step, which is identify the hazard. Second step, which I think most of you all already identified, which is very straightforward. Third one is control. Okay, so I'm very sure you all are familiar also with the control measures, especially the safety uh, practitioners. First of all, we need to consider elimination. Can we totally eliminate this process, uh, this activity? Okay, in a zoo, when you are as a visitor, you're going there as a, uh, uh, what you call, tourist and all that, you like to see the show. So you cannot just eliminate this. People would like to see this uh, show going on. Uh. So elimination, E is cannot. Next, substitute. Can you substitute this crocodile with something else? Less hazardous, less dangerous. Okay, like example, instead of a crocodile, can I use an anaconda? Okay, <laughs> anaconda, a snake. It's totally a different, right? It's not, it's not a boy, it's, it's a snake itself. So it's, it's not a replacement. So you can't really uh, substitute those. Okay, let's say I want to substitute with an alligator. Okay, alligator is not the same as a crocodile. I'm sure you all have seen crocodiles, they are huge. I think the tail can almost uh, kill you by the swing. Okay, whereas the alligator is much more smaller version uh, with a sharper mouth and all that. So it's not a, really a replacement for a crocodile actually. Next is what you call engineering control. 
okay, which I will come to later on, uh, the slides, uh, engineering control. So looking at this scenario, I'm very sure you all will definitely see uh, something like a barricade. Okay, a gate, something like that. Uh, this is what you call engineering control. All right. Any others do you think you can uh, think of? Uh, yeah, maybe you can, uh, you can add administrative uh, control, Raghu. You can just, uh, yeah, what, what about admin controls? You put policies there. Ah, <laughs> no, okay, fair enough. I think, uh, yeah. John, thanks for that. Okay, let me just uh, bring you through. Huh? I think you don't have to answer me now. So first of all, huh, you have to consider elimination. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you can't, then you look at substitution. Let, look mm -hmm. for something less hazardous. Let's say, example, you are using 100% acid, okay, chemical. Huh? Why don't you go for 50%? So in case you come to contact with your hand, you won't have first degree or second degree burn. You know, that's mm -hmm. what you mean by substitution. Less hazardous thing. Then come to engineering control. And that's where you do the modification, barricading, guards huh, in your equipment, huh, rotating equipment, things like that. These three, yeah, will give you a safe workplace. Mm. Then you go for the next one, as John mentioned, administrative control. And last one is PPE. These two uh, will create a safe worker. Mm. Okay, obviously you have to do uh, come from the top. Uh, you need to eliminate first, substitute engineering control. So that's where you create a safe workplace for your workers. Accidents are happening everywhere. Huh? So ideally, we don't want to injure anybody. Everybody got a family at home. So we don't want any person, even your enemy also don't want him to get injured. <laughs> okay? So that's the basic fundamental huh, of risk assessment. We don't want anyone to be injured. We want we to go back home safe. So this is uh, controls, huh, which is number three. So this is basically what is risk assessment. Just to give you uh, additional uh, things, huh? So some students are even give me, a, a Mr. Raghu, why don't we just throw? Throw the food. Don't have to go near. But this is very rude, right? Okay, how would you feel? Huh? Because animal rights, huh? uh, those people will come after you. How come you are mistreating the crocodile? So it's not very obvious. Huh? And some of them even say, uh, can I use a conveyor? Uh, like a conveyor, then the, the food will go through. Then go. Okay, this is engineering control. But I've never seen anywhere in the world uh, that use a conveyor for feeding the, the animals. Uh, it can be very expensive. Huh? So, uh, and don't forget, uh, at the end of the day, crocodiles, they want the food to be provided by the human. They have some love for animals. Okay, these machines and all that uh, don't have any kind of a feeling. So at the end of the day, you still need human touch. Okay, some even say, uh, can I use a robot? Uh, use a robot. Okay, robot also still programmed by a human. You get what I mean? Huh? So, and robot has no feeling. You'll be surprised though. Robot can walk over uh, the crocodile. Though. And definitely, uh, the fees, uh, I believe in Singapore, those who have been to Singapore, uh, the fees is almost, uh, used to be, I think, 10 or $15 uh, during my times uh, when my kid was small. Now I have never visited the zoo, uh, now, for now. <laughs> So I believe if you are using robot, you'll be eating $10, $15? No way. Because all these are expenses. So I, I won't be surprised you go to $100 uh, the entrance fee uh, to enter the zoo. So it's not productive and uh, it doesn't uh, really uh, create that kind of environment for children and tourists to visit the zoo. So that's uh, uh, the idea why uh, robots are out. Even though we are talking about technology, embracing it and all that, uh, AI, artificial intelligence, digitalization, okay? But still, there are some things that humans still need to do uh, ourselves. Some manual work uh, still has to go on, all right? So that's something that you need to incorporate in your risk assessment uh, when you're talking about controls, the treatment. Roger, clear? Ken? That's, that's a good one, Raghu. Ah, so this is basically what is RA. You get, you get what I mean? Some of them yeah. even, uh, they do mention uh, using a drone. You know, now the mm -hmm. drone technology, Instead of uh, use a drone and then drop the thing. It's possible, mm. why not? So you need to consider the technology. How is it helping you? In safety, I'm sure those are safety officers, managers will agree with me. Huh? Nowadays, mm. they're using drone huh, for inspection. 
you don't have to erect scaffolding and uh, work at high dangerous. You can strip and fall and all that. So drone mm -hmm. is doing the job already nowadays. So mm -hmm. it makes uh, your risk assessment uh, more uh, meaningful now. Okay, so yeah. we don't want anyone to get injured. Okay, so, mm -hmm. so we're embracing technology as along the way as well. Okay, mm -hmm. so you need to work in harmony uh, and uh, make sure that we also are uh, keeping up with the times, uh, with the latest uh, uh, state of art technology and all that. So this is basically what risk assessment is. Uh, looking at a scenario in a zoo. Uh, so every activity, there has to be a risk assessment done. Okay, if you are an organization, if you are manufacturing, production, or even an office, a simple office, uh, people many times, uh, they always think that the risk, the danger is on the construction side, manufacturing side. But I've seen uh, people fracture the leg uh, in the office. Uh, when they climb up to do some servicing, to retrieve a file, they drop down and the impact, broken bone. So mm -hmm. don't, ever, don't ever assume uh, that the danger is only on the outside. Uh, back at, at, in the office, uh, you do have as well. So you need to change the mindset a bit. Uh, so danger is everywhere. So it's a matter of doing the risk assessment. Okay, risk assessment is a kind of a proactive measure. Huh? Before injuries can take place, you need to identify, evaluate, and put in the control measure. Okay, so risk assessment is one of the leading uh, leading indicators. I'm sure you all are familiar with lagging indicator, leading indicator. For those who have a management system, this is one of the important fundamental for safety. Besides your inspection, besides your training and all that, huh? risk assessment is the basic fundamental you need to have to prevent injury. Safety and health is basically talking about preventing injuries, zero accidents and so on. Mm. So, Ken? so this is what I wanted yes, to say. So, uh, Raghu, just just to just to uh, just to uh, 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 clarify this, uh, the three important parts in the management, as far as risk uh, management is concerned, is you identify, then you evaluate, then you come up with uh, risk controls. Yes, correct. All right, hey, All Raghu, right. In, your, in your experience, which of these uh, three different uh, activities are, are are critical? The first one, identifying the hazard. Because uh, tendency, uh, Jong, is uh, people have been very complacent. They take things for granted. So they might not be able to identify the hazards. They are carrying on with their daily routine work. They overlook on all this. So the complacency is number one. That's where the, the number one uh, uh, hazard identification is very critical. You must know where is the hazard. It can mm -hmm. be present anywhere. So mm -hmm. are you able to identify them now? Once you identify, then the next step, which is evaluation, control comes in naturally. So the first thing is that complacency where people overlook or don't want to look. <laughs> and mm -hmm. The worst case is people don't want to look. They try to look the other way. Uh, try to mm -hmm. avoid their responsibilities. So that is not fair. Huh? Okay, You must be diligent. As a safety professional, you are trying to save lives. Mm -hmm. So the number one, I would say, is a critical one, identifying all the hazards. Experience mm -hmm. will tell you, but some of them you need to learn, and through years of exposure, through years of uh, competency, you'll be able to tell. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, uh, Jong, is uh, number one will be the critical one first, identifying the hazards. Yeah. Raghu, just one last uh, follow-up question before you proceed. Uh, so uh, I understand you're coming uh, from, from the safety uh, perspective here. Uh, there, are, there are managers, uh, executives in this room who, who may want to take a look at the organizations as a whole. So uh, when you do risk identification, it, it means uh, you, you need not necessarily look at the safety hazard, meaning you may also take a look at other forms of safety. A risk, uh, right? Like maybe, I don't know, financial risk or uh, risk of having customer complaints or even reputation risk or even risk on, on, on breach of uh, uh, security or information. Is that correct, Raghu? Yeah, yeah, correct. correct. Thanks, thanks, Ong. Uh, that's a very good question. Okay, just to share with you because I'm also a practitioner for ISO and all that. For those who are familiar with ISO, uh, system quality, safety, environment, and BCM, energy, all that. So they have adopted uh, right now, uh, about eight years ago, uh, the ISO committee have already adopted uh, a new structure, a new template. 
to incorporate what John just mentioned. Okay, to consider enterprise risk assessment. That means uh, just like what John mentioned, how is the business going to survive? Is there any kind of a new processes economy-wise? How, how will the business perform? So what kind of business model you can have? Okay, how does the pricing affect you? What about the, the trade war between China and America? How was uh, you affected with it? So all these are uh, you have to consider now as part of the ISO. So you need to incorporate this into your business management systems. Okay, so if you will ask me, this is enterprise risk assessment. Besides what I've just shared with you, the crocodile story, eh? this is more on safety. Yeah. Safety, we talk about hazards. But enterprise eh, is talking about survival, sustainability. Okay, many, bus, many companies go bust eh, because of the COVID now. Are you prepared for it? Okay, what about business continuity? Uh, what about suppliers? Do you need to depend on only China? I think many of them who depended on China are gone. So your supply chain, uh, resilience, how would you be able to do or not? So for those business owners, uh, you must start considering an alternative. Okay, different business models, methodologies, and strategy. Uh, you need to work out the strategy. So this COVID-19 uh, is a good lesson learned uh, for many organizations. Look at the airline industry, service industry. Nobody thought they would be gone. So, so from now on, uh, this COVID uh, is like a, a awakening call uh, for businesses uh, to relook at your business, okay, look at your supply chain resilience, organizational resilience, and then think about technology, okay, look at the political situation. So these are some of the things uh, in ISO uh, we are advocating uh, for people to understand the business risk. Okay, on top of the safety risk as well. Why am I emphasizing more on safety? Because if there's an injury, somebody get hurt, or somebody has a fatality, it's very serious. You lost a life. It's just like COVID also. How many? Nearly, I think, one million. One million uh, dead so far, I think, coming to that number already. So it's a learning lesson. Uh, so even uh, infectious disease also is related to health. That's why safety and health, uh, it goes along. So to answer, uh, uh, to, in the nutshell, uh, basically risk is everywhere. So even business risk, you need to do some form of assessment. What, what kind of methodology you are use can be the same as what you're using for safety and health. Okay, there are many other tools uh, available, uh, like fishbone diagram, what if, event tree, fault tree, so FMEA. So whichever the methodology or the tool uh, you're familiar, use them. Okay, don't try to introduce uh, new ones, uh, then people might be confused. Okay, use a common, uh, simplified uh, methodology for your business risk, as well as your safety. All right, Ken? Thank you, Raghu. Ken, okay, Ken. let me move on. Uh. Okay, uh, first of all, just to introduce a bit more, uh, hazards are present everywhere. So especially as I mentioned uh, earlier, even your offices, uh, so don't assume an office is safe enough. Uh, sometimes your back injury, tripping hazard, uh, even the filing system, very common uh, for people, uh, look at the lady uh, using a chair to go up and all that. So basic understanding and then smoking and all that. Just to share with you, uh, this, uh, during this COVID period, uh, I have conducted many Zoom and uh, Microsoft team uh, webinar training, uh, and even lead auditor training. Uh, I was surprised to see one student uh, smoking uh, while I'm teaching. Uh. There's nothing I can do uh, because he's at home, he's smoking, which I never come across in my training uh, uh, live. Uh. Uh, you're not allowed to smoke while I'm training, but see the COVID uh, allow him to smoke and listen to me. <laughs> So as long as you don't create a whole uh, hazard uh, in your house, uh, throw away your cigarette butt properly, uh, and then there's no hazard at all. Uh. So hazard come in many forms. Uh, so it can be something in your office, your daily work, at, and especially work at height. I want to focus uh, a lot on work at height. It's the number one killer, uh, not only in Singapore, I think in the whole world. Okay? So always try to avoid working at height. Okay, I'm sure you all agree, uh, because uh, there's a common... Uh, Injury uh, and a fatality uh, work at height. So as far as possible, try not to uh, work at height. Use the drone technology, as I mentioned. And I'm not, I'm not sure whether why. Uh, falling from height, working at height, all these dangers. And especially falling, uh, okay? 
Falling from height also dangerous. Falling in love also dangerous. Uh, why? Uh? <laughs> why they call it falling in love? Uh? <laughs> <laughs> so which yeah, one is more? <laughs> <laughs> falling from height, you get broken bone. Falling in love, sometimes you get broken heart. Uh? <laughs> oh, there we go. So I don't encourage uh, youngsters. Uh, you still can fall in love, uh, get married and all that. Uh? <laughs> no, that's a good one. Good. Okay. That's a good one. So more hazards, uh, just quickly introducing, uh, can be any form. Uh, so think about what the activity is. Before you do that, do a risk assessment. Okay, That's why you see, uh, like example, eye injuries. You have only one pair of eyes. Okay, You ask a blind man, uh, what is it like to do, not see the world? Okay, While you have it, uh, please treasure it. And your hands also. There's no spare part like your hand, no, uh, no matter what. So think about all these uh, okay, hazards and the solutions and then uh, try to obey the rules and regulations uh, your organization has right okay manual lifting also okay there's no such thing as a re reversing back uh, your back injury especially youngsters uh, they might not be using proper postures uh, and a way of lifting things and all that just to give you an idea uh, okay the the guideline for lifting is uh, 25 kg for men, uh, Asian men, uh, Asian men, 25 kg. Ladies, how about ladies? Any ladies can uh, answer? What's the limit? Lifting limit, manual handling for ladies. Should be the same, right? Uh, you all talk about equal rights, what? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you also must be carrying 25 kg, right? Uh, no, uh, no. Uh. The guideline it says that for ladies, it's 17 kg. For Asian, uh, don't talk about American girls. Uh, okay? So you have to observe all this. And those who are not married, uh, take note, uh, not married on the wedding day, if your wife to be uh, is going to be 50 kg, you still have to leave her. Uh. You don't say, Mr. Ragu said 25 kg, only I can leave you up. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, clear? Copy that, uh, Ragu. Thank okay. you. Okay, uh, then uh, introduction. Uh, even CPU, uh, your computer and all that, uh, is all long term. Uh. Sometimes you have headaches long term uh, observing or uh, looking at the screen even this webinar uh, is one hour not so bad i've conducted five days uh, lead auditor course and uh, it's a, there's a standing uh, order uh, requirement uh, which says that every hour i must give five or ten minutes break it's a requirement uh, because you cannot keep on looking at the screen uh, the eye fatigue all this comes in so one hour no problem uh, so we don't need to have a break very quickly uh. So all these you have to take into consideration. Okay, especially lifting in office. Nothing should be on top of a shelf and all that. Okay. And an RSI is a repetitive strain injury. All these are on a long term. When you get older, eventually you will take a toll. Okay, while well, young you are able to, huh? you have the capacity and all that. So think about long term, huh? or how you're going to be affected by injuries huh? or health, ill health. Okay, so let's carry on. So in the nutshell, uh, these are all the hazards. Uh, can be chemical, mechanical, fire, occupational health, electrical. So please consider all the routine jobs and non-routine jobs as well. Uh, in your day-to-day -day, uh, activities. Okay, in, uh, another way uh, of doing a risk assessment, this is what you call J JSA, uh, Job Safety Analysis. Uh. Imagine you are going to fix a light bulb at home. Okay, this is actually a risk assessment, but in simplified form. Okay, mm -hmm. you look at the on the left side, huh? All these are huh? basically is uh, the steps you break it down, or sometimes they call it method statement. Okay, similar to your business risk or so, huh? You need to list down all the risks mm -hmm. and then identify the hazards here, mm -hmm. and then your recommendation. This is the control measure. So similar to the step one, and this is step three. Mm -hmm. okay, there, there is no evaluation part here. Huh? So for the actual risk assessment, huh, there need to be uh, another one, huh, two here, uh, which is the evaluation, how dangerous it is. Okay, so just to give you some illustration, huh, and uh, oh. as many methods are available huh, in the market, and you might be exposed to. So Raghu, for the for the JSA, uh, there, there's no there's no evaluation involved. In other words, ah, uh, it's straightforward. Okay. Ah, uh, it's, it's a simplified form now for those who don't understand this assessment. Uh, you still mm. can do. As I mentioned earlier, uh, it's common sense. Okay. 
It all depends on you. Like now, right now, uh, there's only seven steps. Okay, if you are very new, you might go until 20 steps. So what the risk assessment is saying is don't be too lengthy and don't be too brief. Reasonable, I think seven steps is reasonable. So that's why uh, they don't want you to carry away uh, with their risk assessment. You need to do the job as well at the same time. Okay, so don't get carried away with the, the procedure, the length, okay, the, the time, effort and all that. So try to be simple approach uh, to make sure your job is to change the bug. So break it down into getting your ladder, take the defective bug, replace the bug and return the tool. So if you can explain to the workers, uh, especially uh, those uh, who are reporting to you, I think they will understand this better. Then you go to risk assessment. Because mm -hmm. uh, the terminology might scare them uh, sometimes. Uh, mm -hmm. Even uh, the introduction of risk assessment, they might not be very comprehensive uh, about risk. What is risk? So mm -hmm. you might want to introduce uh, eventually uh, something like this, a job safety analysis, and then truly bring them to risk assessment. So Raghu, just to clarify, the job safety analysis is entirely uh, different from, uh, or is it a part of the risk assessment process? Yes, it's part of it. It's part of it. Uh, it's just that the uh, actual risk assessment, uh, you have uh, uh, how you determine the severity, <clears throat> how do you determine the likelihood of happening, then you determine the risk. So this is one step, one step further. Okay, so like example, uh, this is what uh, we have been doing, an evaluation, and these three is all risk assessment. So when you are talking about risk assessment, first of all, you need to consider what are the hazards. Okay, and then determine how serious the injury is going to be. Is it going to be minor, moderate, or major? Minor means uh, it could be a, just a first aid case. A small cut on your finger can be a minor. But the moment you go and see a doctor, it becomes a medical treatment case. And of course, uh, a major will be life-threatening, like fracture, or uh, very serious injuries uh, can be a major. Okay, you look at the seriousness of the injury first. Okay, this is actual risk assessment. Huh? Next, you look at the likelihood. What are the chances of happening? Is it very remote? Or is it occasional every month or every quarterly happening? Or is it frequently every day, every week? So mm -hmm. with these two combined, then you get the low risk, medium risk, or is it high risk? See, you look mm -hmm. at the severity here, you see, look at the likelihood here. This is how risk assessment is being done. As compared to earlier, remember the job safety analysis, I don't have the, the methodologies. But for, for simplified way version, you can use this JSA. But still is a form of risk assessment, but this is more thorough. So whenever you do risk assessment, you have to take into consideration severity, the likelihood, and of course, the risk. So again, to those business owners, you can use the same, the same methodology for your business. How serious the business can be? Is it a minor? Is it only a one million dollar loss? Is it a five million dollar loss? Or is it a major ten million? You just give a numbers to that, huh, but using the same method. Mm. Customer complaint. Huh, let's say three can be a minor three. Huh? Mm. If let's say there's five, there can be a moderate. If it's a ten customer complaint, there's a major. Instead of using uh, injuries here, you use customer complaint mm. and then uh, talk about uh, financial control. Mm. Uh, those kind of things are uh, relevant to your business. And is it happening every now and then? Is it happening once in a year? Mm. So the likelihood uh, and the civility can apply for injuries, safety, your business also. Mm. So try to use the same methodology if you can. Okay. And uh, sometimes they use uh, even uh, SWOT analysis uh, and all that uh, in business. Okay, another way. So it depends on your organization, uh, what kind of method, how are they familiar with. So this is risk assessment actually. Okay, looking at the seriousness of injury, likelihood of how it can happen, and then you determine the risk and see whether is it under the low risk, medium risk, or high risk. Only three types of risk. So same goes to your enterprise risk assessment also. So for and those who are going for ISO 45,000 or the new ISO, uh, take note mm -hmm. that this is the requirement now. Your business also, you have to do a risk assessment. Similar mm -hmm. to this. 
And uh, Raghu, just just to just to add to that, uh, the uh, severity likelihood is uh, discretionary on the part of the organization. Meaning they can they can assign value. Uh, what what to them is three. What to them is five. What to them yes. is ten. Okay. You decide uh, for yourself, John. That's a good question, huh? Because you know your processes. You are a business owner. If you're not sure, then you can uh, benchmark with your similar industries in the country, uh, mm -hmm. in your sector. Uh, right? If not, uh, okay. you gather the team. That's why the risk management uh, is forming a team. Gather the team first. Then have a discussion, uh, all the subject matter experts, and they contribute. Then only mm -hmm. you can start doing RA. All right. Risk management uh, is a com encompassing the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So... To answer John's question, uh, you need to consider forming a team, a steering committee or something like that and start discussing among yourself and give a number to it. Is it happening mm. every year or two years once? Something like that. Mm. Okay, give some numbers, uh, uh, quantitative numbers so that people can consistently uh, come to the same agreement. If not, uh, people will start guessing. No, 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 I don't think so this way. Uh, then, you know. You have to do some brainstorming uh, to gather the team together and do this. It's a team effort. Uh, it's a team effort. It cannot be just one individual. So, and uh, to give you some ideas, uh, this is another. Just now I show you it's three by three. Uh, this is three by three. Uh, okay, this is three by three. In Singapore, just to give you some idea, we are using this five by five now. Matrix, mm. uh, five by five matrix. But it's quite similar. Uh, the three by three is here. The three by three is here. They give another two more huh, categories here. Mm. And the same. This is low risk. All the yellow one is uh, medium risk. Mm. High risk. Okay, so I think in Singapore, huh, as you all know, huh, there's many laws. Huh? Singapore is a fine city. Huh? <laughs> so risk management is one of the regulations we have to follow. So this is what we need to adopt. Huh? So I think same goes to Filipinos. Huh? You all can huh, make use of this. Huh? So this is a methodology uh, that we use on uh, the matrix uh, to decide whether is it low, medium, or high risk. And sometimes we use numbers, uh, it's good, better. See, like example, uh, this case, uh, it was occasional and it was major. So it becomes sure, right? So let's say now you have improved this uh, to eight. But if you don't use a quantification, uh, it still becomes medium risk. But you look at the numbers, you have improved from sure to eight. So sometimes, uh, quantification uh, can help to show the effort you have put in and how you have improved. Okay, I, I'm not sure whether it's a bit confusing or not. So sometimes it's good for you to use numbers uh, to illustrate. Uh. So numbers, as you all know, uh, what gets measured, gets done. So, so this is the overall picture, uh, just to give you. Uh. Okay, first of all, you need to identify the hazard, evaluate and control. This is the basic fundamentals huh, of risk assessment. And this is risk management. This whole thing is risk management. See, you need to form a team, gather all the information, identify what are the activities, what are the control measures, severity of accident, likelihood, and then finally keep records. Okay, all these are uh, live, uh, live documents. Huh? Whenever there's an accident, whenever there's a change, Go back and take a look all your at your document record and keep it updated. Okay? And you can see the picture at the side. Huh? This is common. Huh? Okay? People always say who's in charge of safety? Safety officer, safety manager. Okay? But at the end of the day, who get injured? Anybody can get injured. So it's everybody's responsibility, huh? safety. Huh? And this is a Control measures I was talking about. First, you need to eliminate. You cannot then go consider substitution. Then you go to engineering control. So these three creates a safe workplace. Okay. And the last two is safe worker. Administrative control is where you have training, signages, okay, job rotation, and finally PP. Okay. So PP is the last line of defense, huh, which it can protect you. Huh? So as, as far as possible, try to come from here huh, and go down. So this is the control measures that I'm talking about. And this is how it looks like, huh? uh, risk assessment, uh, typically in the office. Huh? 
Okay, so what you do is uh, same, identify the activity, look at the hazards, what are the possible injuries, what kind of controls, look at the severity, likelihood, and the risk level. And then you put in the controls. So just put it in records and then file it away. Every now and then you have some injuries, go and take back uh, a look at this. So I, I'm not sure what format you are using, but this basic uh, must be there. Okay. Okay, finally, uh, safety timeout. Uh, okay, just a quick one before I end. It takes a minute to write a safety rule. It takes an hour to hold a safety meeting. It takes a week to plan for a good safety program. It takes a month to put the program into operation, implementing it. Huh? And finally, it takes a year to win a safety award. Okay? And it takes a lifetime to make the worker safe. Uh, safe worker. But it only takes only a second, one second huh, to destroy all this in one accident. So take the time now to work safely and help your fellow employees to be safe. Okay, why, why am I emphasizing more on safety? It's closest to my heart. Huh? Because in safety, we are killing people. In quality, you recycle bag, you put it under concession, recycle bag and all that. Environment, we're talking about pollution and all that. Okay, in safety, we are actually killing people. Actually, our environment is more important. No? The environment is going to kill everybody one day. <laughs> but then... It will be our future generation who will be suffering that. Huh? But for now, this is the closest to me. Huh? So with the COVID around, huh, uh, I want to end uh, with this. Huh? You have to consider huh, uh, safe distancing, okay, contact tracing, wearing your mask, uh, sanitization. So our lifestyle is going to change uh, totally. Huh? I'm sure you all heard about the accident in India, LG Polymer. What happened is uh, the plant was shut down because of COVID. Two months mm. and the raw materials start decaying, oxidized, mm. and then give out a gas. I think a few mm. hundred people died, similar to the Bhopal incident uh, in 1985. Mm. Okay, so please, business owners, go back and take a look at your business equipment, tools, interlocks, safety interlocks, easy function. Don't assume, uh, okay, start back again. I'm very sure uh, that businesses, there will be a lot of challenges uh, facing you uh, in terms of manpower, okay rotation, okay, business uh, resilience, uh, basically. Uh, can you bounce back you know, after this COVID? Okay, so with that, I end my presentation. Selamat po, and uh, looking forward to your questions. I think, are we on right time? Perfect, uh, Raghu. Th thank you very Good. much. That's, uh, that's a fantastic talk right there. Th thank you for, for sharing with us your insights and uh, okay. walking us through the entire process of risk management from identification, evaluation to controls. Very, very, very informative, Raghu. Thank you so much. We, have, we, have, we still have some few minutes for, for Q&A here, Raghu. Our first question here is, uh, can you give example on uh, substitution? This is from uh, Mamfeli Sinon. Okay, substitution, as I mentioned, uh, okay, uh, let's say you are using uh, the same example, 100% uh, uh, very concentrated chemical uh, for doing some activity. Can you look at the market uh, with a lesser degree of concentration? Can do the same job. You get what I mean? Or? Substitute yeah. it for something less hazardous. Mm. Okay. 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 So, like, like chemical, I can give you one example of that. Huh? So, uh, what else? Are you talking about safety? So, talking about yes. safety, right? Yes, Raghu. Yes. Uh, so, try to look for some other alternative. Alternative, uh, that is substitution. If you have been doing something quite dangerous, uh, see whether there's any way, other ways can be done. Mm -hmm. But if you, let's say, you want to do a barricading, protect, uh, that comes under engineering control. Mm -hmm. Substitution is doing the same activity, but uh, replacing it with something less hazardous. Okay. That's uh, if, you, if you're using a knife, example, mm -hmm. another one, knife. It's a sharp edge, like it can cut you. Can mm -hmm. you use something else? Consider a scissors better uh, instead mm -hmm. of knife. Still can cut what? You get me not? A knife uh, is a, can give punctured holes, injuries. Mm -hmm. But scissors are not so serious. Uh, can be a scissors, can do the same job. Uh, that could be a substitution as compared to a sharp edges in a knife that you use to cut your back. Mm. Even at home, huh? 
But of course, uh, you don't cut your chicken with your scissors and all that. I hope cooking is different. <laughs> mm. uh, thank you, Raghu. From uh, Irineo C. De Las Armas, uh, his question is, could you consider uh, non-compliance with uh, laws, rules, and regulations as uh, risk for the business? So this may not necessarily be safety. Uh, okay, good. <clears throat> okay, in ISO, uh, I use the terminology pestle, pestle analysis. I'm not sure whether you all are familiar. Okay, when you're doing business design, you have to consider external issues. Okay, how these is external issues are categorized uh, is under pestle. Okay, like example, uh, pestle, let me just read it quickly. Uh. Okay, let me just uh, pestle. I hope you all can see. Uh. Yes, I do, yeah. Okay, P is political, economical, social, technological, legal, and environmental. So for business owners, take note when you're considering issues, businesses, huh, in risk and all that, first of all, you have to identify the concern, problems, challenges, uh, what are the issues. The issues can be categorized under pestle. Legal is that. Uh, this is legal. That means you have to consider what are the possibility for you to be non-compliant. Is there a summon? If serious enough, you can uh, shut down your plant. And in Singapore, uh, as your, uh, those who have worked here before, uh, there, mm. there is a stop work order. If there's any fatality that happen in your company organization, the ministry will issue a stop work order. This is legal. So there's implication. You cannot carry on with your business. Your production cannot go on. Mm. So you might want to consider this pestle analysis uh, as part of your business uh, uh, risk assessment. Mm. Uh, what are the issues related to political? How about the economy, social, technological, and legal? And finally, how does it affect the environment? Mm. Uh, pestle analysis. They call it pestle analysis. Uh, you might want to consider that. So legal is part of it. Mm. All right. There's a lot of implication liabilities, uh, so don't break the law. Okay. Thank okay. you, Raghu. Thank you, Raghu. And yeah, we, we, uh, maybe this is our last question right here. Uh, is a risk uh, categorization uh, uh, influenced by the priorities of the organization? Yes. That's where I think uh, there's a, under ISO, uh, they talk about L. Mm -hmm. Okay. In 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 the past, huh, we used to call it management, top management. Now they have changed the terminology. Now we talk about leadership. Mm -hmm. So that shows huh, the leadership have to provide the support. Mm -hmm. Is it committed? No? Uh, is it part and parcel of your business? So you have to incorporate all this into your business. So the leaders huh, are the one who will drive, set mm -hmm. the direction, set the example. So all depends on the leaders, uh, their vision, mission. Mm -hmm. So if the leaders don't see the value, uh, then chances are uh, your organization might not uh, be up to the, uh, the direction uh, that you're going for. Uh. All right. But I would say uh, they're definitely uh, the leaders uh, play a very important part uh, in setting the direction, supporting, providing mm -hmm. all the resources needed. Mm -hmm. So the perspective uh, of the leaders uh, and the corporate world uh, is important, especially SMEs, uh, small medium enterprises are struggling. MNCs are mm. uh, no issue, corporate world. They have all the financial, especially this one. Mm. Uh, they have no, no issue. So, but this one uh, cannot be just an issue. Uh, so that's why you need to be very prudent. Mm. Okay? Be very careful in your competency. Uh, the other thing I would like to tell you is these two C. Uh, okay? mm. One is confidence. Another one is competence. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have the confidence level uh, to proceed on. That, that's why you need to do the risk assessment for your business. And mm -hmm. make sure your people are also competent. Do they have the necessary skills, you know, knowledge? You know? I employ them. So mm -hmm. sometimes the manpower uh, also play a very important part of uh, who you recruit. What kind of uh, you know, knowledge are uh, they bringing? How do they impart? How do they share your sharing? So all these uh, depends on the leadership also. Uh, how do you drive it? The organization. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't be a boss, huh? be a leader. Okay, boss is just telling you instruction. Leader means you hold your hands and bring you along. 
So it all depends on the leadership and style. If you have an authoritative one, they say, no, I just want to see results. Okay, I can't say that there, there, there must be some collaborative uh, effort. Uh. I have mm -hmm. a discussion, I have a feedback from the shop floor. Yeah, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the shop, uh, the people on the floor are uh, the ones who are executing the job or facing the hazards and all that. So have a listening here, uh, okay, and walk the talk. Uh, they call it uh, walk the talk. All right? All right. Well said. Any other questions? I'm, I'm okay to no problem, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, may, may, maybe this one, uh, Raghu, this is uh, just uh, one, one last question we can accommodate here. Uh, uh, kindly differentiate hazards and uh, risk. Hazards and risk. Yeah. Okay, risk is a combination. Okay. Hazard is uh, present, uh, it's physically present. Uh, so risk is coming together with the severity and livelihood. Okay, like example, the crocodile. Okay, is a hazard. But is it a risk? Not yet or what? But what if uh, you go close to it? The consequences mm. you can get injured. Mm. Okay, what are the chances, severity? Okay, and what is the livelihood? Of course, the crocodile hungry will eat you also. Right? Mm. So, hazard is separate. Huh? It's part of the risk assessment process. Uh, but risk is uh, talking about coming together with the livelihood and the severity, the consequences. Mm. Uh, that's where the risk comes in. Mm. Hazard alone are uh, not sufficient. Uh, is identifying the hazard. How does it come together and uh, create an injury? Uh, that's where the risk comes in. You have mm. to evaluate the consequence. Is it going to have an injury? What are the likelihood of happening? And what are the severity, the severity of injury? All right. Thank you very much, Raghu. Well, 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 well shared. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, I think that's, uh, that's about it uh, for today. Ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, give a big round of applause to uh, Raghu. And Raghu, thank you so much really for sharing your, your wonderful time here with us. We, I'm sure we, our audience today have learned a lot. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Uh, I, I miss you, Raghu, and our bakuti there in, uh, in Singapore. <laughs> We, we would love to fly you over here to the Philippines, Raghu. So uh, uh, thank you so much for your time. And uh, I'm, I'm sure this will not be the last uh, Raghu where we're, 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 we're planning our next sessions with you on, uh, of course, as mentioned, on, on, on health and safety. And Raghu is a, is a, is a brilliant subject matter expert on, on that. So again, Raghu, thank you so much. Fantastic sure, sure. talk today. And uh, to all our audience who have stayed with us, we have about 86, 89 uh, uh, in, in, in the class. Thank you for joining us. And uh, there are questions here asking about the copy of the presentation. We are uh, recording this and putting this in our channel in YouTube. So uh, in seven days, we're, we're, we're uploading it there. So you may go to our YouTube channel. And uh, for that, Raghu, again, uh, thank you. Stay safe and uh, God bless. Uh, uh, always stay healthy, Raghu. And to everyone, stay tuned. and. Uh, uh, stay right here in this channel every week. We're doing this uh, free webinar for all of you and uh, always do what you love to do. Thank you very, very much. This has been John Fernandez. Enjoy the rest of the day. Ragu, hat off you. Thank you so much. Thank you.